This call is now being recorded. Who removed the Professor Siva Kumar from here? Okay, so shall we start? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Shankar Sophie is the. So, what is the sound? Yes, yeah, so Shankar Sophie, my mute your mic. Okay, so uh, I have to give an introduction, or anybody is giving an introduction on AIP? No, 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 on AIP. Uh, okay, I'll just start with the introduction. Yes, many times, so, okay, yeah. so I will be starting with the introduction of the speaker. Yes. Okay, so shall we start now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can just uh, give brief information about association and foundation, and uh, after that, you can introduce the speaker. Okay, so uh, okay, I I guess I'll give the introduction of the speaker and later on we can say about the information of AIP. Okay, so a very good morning, a very good afternoon to everybody here. I welcome all of you to the eighth talk of AIP Association of Indian Physicists and uh, not wasting so much time. So, let's introduce our today's speaker, Mr. Rom Tripathi who is currently pursuing his PhD on cold atoms and Bose-Einstein condensate from Faculty of Physics, Warsaw University, Poland. So he's working, his research is based on cold atoms and Bose-Einstein condensate. Previously, he served as a research assistant in many prestigious institutes, including Polish Academy of Sciences. He did his MSc from University of Allahabad and while pursuing his MSc, he worked on the relativistic quantum treatment to the photons. And therefore, his research interest is also based on quantum optics, quantum information, and quantum electrodynamics. So today, he will be giving and presenting the talk on the short introduction to the atoms light manipulating and interrogation of atoms using light. And also, he will be discussing on the career guidance of pursuing PhD from abroad. So I request all of you to please continue listening till the end for an enthusiastic Sunday and also for an eye-opening discussion on the studies of atoms and light. So I welcome Mr. Rom Tripathi for today's exciting talk. Okay, so thanks Sonali for, for giving me pleasure to present here. Thanks everybody, including Sanjay and Captain, Captain Art to, to invite me to provide a talk over here. And uh, as we, we have discussed a little before, that this talk won't be a lot of mathematical, but while we will go through like what are the theoretical things and like toy models of atoms and photons and stuff so that we can see what is the inside but not with a well mathematical with a well mathematical treatment but while while just seeing some images and so okay so let's start okay so can, can you see screen and just if can you see a screen? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so just don't worry because uh, if you don't see slides over here, I have a lot of pictures to show you all. So just don't worry that this talk will be just uh, boring writing and stuff. But I have I have a lot of pictures for you, so I will show you. But like first, let's discuss water photons. Okay, so. So going from very, very basic or very basic physics, so we have our universe and it something like, uh, I usually start with this thing. So we have our universe and the universe is made up of two things. 
something which is called radiation and matter. So, so radiation has a lot of comp like radiation has a lot of part uh, in the universe, and radiation can be described by a well-known classical way, while there is also a way of describing radiation in a modern way, quantized radiation, okay? So if you have a radiation and you, want, and you quantize it, the quant of the radiation is actually called the photon. So, okay, let's come to a very basic uh, quantum treatment of photons. So if you have a photon and uh, photon m might have a frequency. So let's say the frequency is new. That's a very classical notation of frequency. So the photon might have energy, which is the Planck constant multiplied by the frequency of the photon. So that's a well-known description of photon. And also if it's a frequency and photon is traveling with the speed of light in a vacuum, so it, it has a well-known description in terms of the wavelength, which should be like hc over lambda, okay? Now, okay, so c being the velocity of the photon, while lambda is the wavelength, but actually, actually in experiments, people prefer, people prefer measuring the frequency over the wavelength. And it is just because if you have a photon and it is traveling through a medium, so there are more chances that uh, the lambda chances when frequency will change. But however, I just want to make clear that there is a well chance that there are nonlinear processes and photon is going through a medium and the frequency might also change. But it has a very higher chance that the wavelength might change compared to the frequency of the photon machine. So there is a phrase that always measure anything but the lambda or only measure the frequency for the photon experiment list. There's a good phrase about it, okay? So once again, I told you that photon is a quantum of energy, but there is also an electromagnetic wave description of the photon. Uh, sorry, radiation. Sorry, not the photon, but the radiation. And it is like light or the radiation is travels as an electromagnetic wave and you have electric and magnetic fields uh, okay you have electric and magnetic fields which are like oscillating in quite perpendicular direction to the propagation and they are also perpendicular to each other okay so that's a well-known description of photons and I, I hope that everybody knows it so just not wasting time about this a lot Let's come to atoms, okay? Atoms, so a very classical description of atoms like atoms have a nucleus, nucleus have nucleons like proton and neutron, and outside the nucleus, electrons are orbiting, okay? So something like this. You have nucleus, you have electrons, uh, sorry, you have protons and neutrons inside the nucleus, while electrons are orbiting, that's a very, very classical and old picture of the nucleus, as an old picture of an atom. So that's something which is called a Bohr model of atom. So electrons are orbiting, but not today's modern, or at least not very modern, but uh, a picture of atom what we use today, it, it is the orbital stuff. So, it orbitals have, uh, I just want to make sure that orbitals have nothing to do with the electron orbit. So in orbital picture, electron is not actually orbiting, but there are distribution of electron outside the nucleus. So you, you have a nucleus over here and there might be, a, there might be distribution of electron around the nucleus. And that's what is called the orbital. So in this distribution, electron might have a finite probability to live, uh -huh, okay. Okay, so so here are certain like uh, some orbitals. Okay, so orbitals are just Schro solution of Schrodinger equation. You take the Schrodinger equation, you and you write the appropriate potentials where the Schrodinger where the Schrodinger equation. Uh, okay, so ju just take an atom, 
and uh, write the appropriate potential. So if, if it is an atom, so it will be like the nuclear, uh, like nuclear attraction of electron and it will just the Coulomb attraction. If it is a, let's say, molecule, then it will be like mutual different kind of attractions might appear. But these attractions and stuff, if you put in Schrodinger equation, you will get a wave function. And this wave function actually is called an orbitals. So make sure that while doing, while doing an orbital stuff or while doing a, a quantum mechanics, you do not see that electron is orbiting the nucleus, but in in this case, you only see that okay, we we have a nucleus here, and we might have an electron here or here or here or here, and the, at each place there is a finite probability of getting an electron. So, just see this picture. We have a we have a nucleus, or we have a place where electron has a very high probability uh, of the like it has a very high probability for being over there. And if you go further away, at least in the, these two pictures, we see that the probability of finding electron is uh, going to decay. While these kind of different orbitals, these are called P orbitals, they have quite different ways. How, how do you describe the position probability density of electron? And all this stuff, you can easily see that it has nothing to do with the orbiting electron, that electron is actually not orbiting the nucleus, but while it, it is described by something which is called the wave function, and the wave function are just the solution of Schrodinger equation. So at least in this kind of stuff, you never, uh, never be confused that orbit where electrons are moving around the nucleus compared to orbitals without just the solution of Schrodinger equation. And these are actually square of this wave function or position probability density. Okay. So if you, if, you, if you see this image, you might wondering why there are three numbers over here. So these three numbers are something which is called the quantum numbers of, uh, quantum numbers of uh, electron. And uh, how these quantum numbers actually appear it is in the following way. So if you have a Hamilton, let us let me tell you why some quantum numbers appear and why more than one quantum num numbers might appear, okay? So I will just uh, give you a small insight why quantum numbers appear, not why these specifically. So, so let's say if you have a Hamiltonian, any Hamiltonian, and this Hamiltonian can be written as several Hamiltonians, so H1 plus H2 plus H3 and plus H4, something like this, okay? And in this case, if you know what are the solutions of H1, what are the solutions of H2, what are the solutions of H3 and what are the solutions of H4, there's some, uh, then you can write, actually then you can write this sol solution of this entire sh sh uh, Hamiltonian, no, not, sorry, not a solution, but actually eigenfunction type. I just, my tongue was slipped. So if you know the eigenfunction of all Hamiltonians well separately, then you can write the total solution as like psi1 multiplied by psi2 multiplied by psi3 and multiplied by psi4, okay? So with once you solve the Schrodinger equation, with, the, with each kind of psi, you will get a quantum number. And that's why, for example, in, in hydrogen atom wave function, you split the total Hamiltonian in, in three parts. Uh, not three parts, but actually you do in, it in two parts, and each like radial and then isomotal and then magnetic ways you split it, and each corresponds to a wave function. Of, uh, sorry, each corresponds to a quantum number, okay? So that's what I, I told you, like how does a different, what is the story behind appearing quite different quantum numbers because Hamiltonians can be, can be, um, okay, so if Hamiltonian consists a lot of parts, then different part might have different wave function and total wave function can be written as the multiplication of all these. And so that it, it might cons consist of a lot of quantum number, okay. So while the hydrogen atom is the easiest atom to solve and you, you know what are the exact solutions of 
hydrogen atom also in the quantum mechanics but also with the help of classical electrodynamics so you use a straightforward newton equation and the classical electrodynamics from your basic book and you can get the hydrogen not the orbital picture like what is the probability density of electron but you can get what is the energy structure of the hydrogen atom and uh, here it is actually an energy structure of hydrogen atom it is given so so from here we can see that hydrogen atom may not contain okay so so energy of atom what does do i mean the energy of atom so energy of atom is like you have an atom okay and uh, you see there is a nucleus so the farthest electron from the nucleus okay so in in orbit picture it is like electron in outermost shell while in our our vital picture, you said, what is the furthest electron in my uh, atom? This has some energy, and this energy is uh, referred usually as the energy of an atom, okay? So, so energy of atom has some discrete structure, so the, your atom doesn't, like, it, it won't contain all energies which are possible from here to here, like you heat water to any temperature. The, in the case of atoms, it's not so. So these atoms might contain very discrete energy levels. And all these discrete energy levels correspond to very discrete energy configurations. And some energy configurations are here, but let's not talk about, like, we have a finite time to complete the lecture, OK? But however, this is a picture how energy states of hydrogen atom look like while this axis is actually energy and that's okay but how do i know like let's say this is a theoretical picture and this only comes comes from the theoretical descriptions how do i know that this is the actual this is the actual energy picture for the hydrogen atom so for this let's ask the atom like what are its energy structure with like asking to atom they won't understand the language of uh, humans so it will be like you ask the atom in some quantum language that what is your energy structure and then they will tell you in their language and you need to uh, you need to interpret it in on our usual talkative language so how to talk to atom and that's what is called the interrogation of atoms so take an atom and ask what was an energy structure and what was uh, your wave function, transition properties, and so. So talking to atoms, let's uh, because hydrogen atom has a quite a complicated wave function which is given by here. So uh, and even the energy structure is not very very simple. So let's let's use a toy model of atom, which is like not a real atom, but like. Uh, and a very good approximation of atom, okay? Let's say what is the particle in a box. So take a particle, just take quantum particle in one dimension and confine it within a boundary. Boundary should also be very quantum. So it could be like several nanometers or so. So you don't put your atom some, somewhere in this kind of well but actually atom is moving only in one dimension and the boundary is actually putting atom in infinite potential will it actually mean that the boundaries of atom, they are impenetrable. So you put your atom so that it, only, it can only move in one degree of freedom and the boundaries are impenetrable. So this atom might have different energies and uh, these energies are so that these energies are not continuous, but they are well discrete. And also, once atom is in so very certain energy state, the probability of getting at this atom in any position might change. With uh, like, let's say, an atom has energy E1, and the part, the probability of getting at this point is P1. While if atom has certain different energy the probability of getting this point might change, okay? So that's, that's what the very simple treatment of quantum mechanics gives for the particle in one dimension, which is really a particle confined in a one dimension 
uh, motion with impenetrable barriers. Okay, but if you see the energy diagram, there are certain energy diagrams which, which this atom like certain energy levels which this atom might have. You will see it has nothing but like just uh, flipped this uh, hydrogen atom uh, energy levels, or not just flipped, but like at least a good approximation because here you will see that as you go go in higher energies, the energy level are going to be closer and closer. In this case, you see that, okay, you are going to higher energies and energy level are going to further and further. But believe me that there is. Uh, Okay, so, uh, just in a moment, I will tell you why this actually doesn't matter. Or matter, but in our sense, in our talk, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Also, it is the same that you saw this uh, Schrodinger equation for, for this part, uh, for the particle in the box. Okay, this, this actually configuration is called particle in the box, but it's, uh, it is just a one dimensional box where the electron or the quantum particle has no feeling about any other degrees of freedom. But if you if you do so, you will get something which is called the wave functions, okay, the uh, diagonal function of uh, Hamiltonian, and and the actually probability of finding the photon, uh, sorry, the finding of the electron at any position can be given by this uh, modulus of psi. Okay, so let's say psi is the wave function. So probability of getting a electron at any specific position is given by mod psi squared and in the like in case of particle in the box the psi is actually real so here you can write just psi squared saying okay but the title was like talking to atom so how to talk to atom here is the way uh, okay is there any other energy diagram okay here is the energy diagram so let's talk to atom Atom and what are your energy states? Also, for this, le let me write some wave functions. So I will write like this is psi one, this is psi two, this is psi three, this is psi four, and so. Okay. Let me put a bunch of electrons here, which let let me put a white light. Let's say I I'm putting white light over this quantum system. And white light might contain a lot of photons with a lot of energies. And these energies may cover this transition, these energies, these energies, these energies, and a lot, okay? So what really happens, let's say you put white light, and uh, for a moment, let's say that light is polarized in this direction, which is direction of energy, okay? No, no sorry. Let's forget about the polarization. I will introduce it in a moment, okay? So firstly, according to the distribution of electrons, let's say this is the fermion or boson. The distribution is like, at least, uh, let's say it is a Maxwellian distribution. So all electrons are in very near to ground state. And once you hit it up, electrons go to exit the state, okay? So according to the quantum mechanics, once electron go from here to here, there is a probability of going electron from here to here, okay? So this probability is actually given, given by mod psi 1 to psi 4 squared and something like this, okay? The probability of going electron from here to there, it is given by mod psi 1 inner product with psi 3 squared, okay? But there is also something which is very important that it is called the adiabatic transition that they also depends on the property, polarization property of, uh, of light. So if light is polarized in J direction, they will go like this. But if light is polarized in this direction, actually the electron from this position might try to reach over there, okay? So for, for making sure that everything is fine, we put uh, our operator here, okay? so. Just Q is the charge of electron, or, or let's say E, and R is the direction of polarization of light. And uh, it will give you a very nice thing. This is something which is called the selection rule. So let me let me write this, write this integral. So I'm just writing like, let's do 
negative infinity to positive infinity and dr, okay? And psi 1 and E and just let's say light is polarized in Z direction to Z and psi 2, okay? And just do a modest square, okay? Believe me, this is a wonderful integral and all the selection rules and the stuff you, you have heard of, it only depends on this integral. Uh, okay, Om. So there is a question yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, Shraddha is asking that why are you denoting ket vector and why not mm -hmm. bra vector in probability density? Uh -huh. So it is kind of traditional stuff that we can uh, denote the a state by a ket vector, but like while you know, okay, so bra vector is just the mathematical stuff that so that, okay, just making make sure that ket vector is a traditional notation and bra vector is just a mathematical way of writing, uh, writing inner products. I have never seen that a real state is represented by a bra vector, okay? Uh, if, yes. if any have, anybody have uh, like other explanations, I really welcome. But like I really never seen that anybody representing real estate by a by a bra vector. And uh, in my opinion, this bra vector is just a mathematical uh, way of writing an inner product. Okay, so, same something like here. So if you want to, uh, if you if you have a state, let's say psi. So it is not bet better way of writing this is it as psi star, okay? Because this psi star and psi and then this integral d tau, it is actually a way of writing an inner product. So any state, it is better represented by a psi or, <laughs> or by a cat vector. That's, that's a traditional stuff, right? Yes, yes. Real states are always associated with cat vectors. Yeah, real. Uh, I won't say re what. What do I understand by real state? Or even I said, but uh, it was just slip of tongue. There is nothing like real or. Okay, but uh, however, there is a tradition denoting a state by a cat vector. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. You can continue. Sir, I have one question. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sir. And sir, uh, how you decided yeah. that uh, uh, to put a psi uh, one in bra side and psi four in ket side uh, in this ah. uh, integration? Uh, okay, 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 okay. So uh, the the way you write this integration for the absorption is like this is your first state and this is your second state, and uh, I, I just in a moment I will also tell you what will be significance if you write the, sorry, if you write psi 2 here and psi 1 here. Right now I'm telling that if I'm shining a photon or some photons over here, what is the probability of going electron from ho here to there? But in, in, the, in like uh, an upside down way, if all electrons are distributed among these states, there is a probability that electron might go from here to here, here to here, and here to here. And like they might play between any energy states, okay? So uh, then you flip this integral and and this will really give you uh, the information. And this information is actually called the intensity, which is proportional to this thing, okay? But let me continue. So I told you that this is a very wonderful integral. Okay, and if any questions, just feel free to ask, okay? Even, even just open your mic, mic and ask any time, okay? So all the selection rules, which says for the atoms that uh, this transition is possible and this transition is not possible, and so and so, they all just come from this integral, okay? All the, in all the ways, when you put all quantum numbers of psi, let's say in her case of hydrogenism, NLM quantum numbers, all quantum numbers and all combination of quantum numbers, once this integral is non-zero, they are called the allowed transitions. All combinations when actually they're called dipole allowed transitions and uh, all, all other kinds of transition when this integral is non-zero, they are called 
dipole forbidden transitions. And uh, there are also some quadrupole transitions and so, but they have really, really, really left intensity. So with common spectrographs, you can't really see. Okay, but uh, believe me, this is a wonderful integral and this will give you a real proportionality factor of intensity. So what is intensity and what I'm re really talking about? So let's say very first and easiest method of interrogation, you shine a light over this uh, atomic system and uh, electrons are going from lower state to lots of states and the probability of going electron from here to here is given by this, this kind of integral, okay? So what will happen in a moment that actually these states have a finite time, okay? So in these states, electron may not live forever time. So each of these states have, have an associated with is called the, uh, so it is represented by tau and is called the lifetime of electron. So after the uh, once lifetime is completed over here, these electrons actually fall down to lower states. So uh, once electrons fall down from here to here, you will see the, what will be the probability of falling down electron from here to here. It could be actually psi four. Then uh, if this transition is straight, then it could be er this dipole stuff here, psi three, and then mod squared. Okay. So, so you will get, once you shine this photon and uh, your system will go, all electrons will go here and there in excited state, but once you switch off this and then there will be a relaxation and then the, you will get different photons, some photons of this energy, some photons of this energy, some 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 of this energy and so. And, and number of each photons actually correspond to what is uh, what this value of this integral, okay? Do you understand? Because this is the probability of transition. That uh, this transition had a higher probability of this transition. So number of photons in this transition, I will get the higher number of photons compared to this. So, and let's, let's denote each photon by a respective frequency. So let's say, okay, I, I really can't picture it draw, but there, there could be a relatively a lot of number of transitions. So each transitions correspond to a frequency once you measure, okay? And uh, let's say on y-axis you represent what is the, what is the number of photons. So let's say this, this photon has a frequency omega one, and it has a very high transition probability. So at the at the point omega one, I will I can associate with a very high transition probability. While okay, and this y axis is just let's say the number of photons. So for this transition, let's say I will get a lot of number of photons compared to this transition, which is omega two. Let's say omega two is here, and less probability of. Uh, transition and th therefore less photons in this transition. If you if you represent something like this, this is actually, uh, okay. So this diagram is actually, which is called the spectrum. Uh, okay, so this is also called the spectrum, but this is an X, this is usually an experimental spectrum. You shine a light over here and uh, then electrons are de-exciting and, and you get something like this. There is an where is the experimental arrangement so that you can just get this diagram, and each of this these things are called spectral lines. So they will give you the information about these energy levels, what are their energies, and they also give you what is the information about this integral. Okay, so by taking this uh, spectrum or the spectrograph and analyzing it, you can really experimentally determine what is your actual energy structure, energy structure in the, in the atom or energy structure of your quantum system. And there is also a way which is called deperturbation, so you can deperturb what was your actual shape of the potential well. So 
this is one thing like you can you can ask your atoms and they will give you the energy structure of atoms however the key processes are well, are listed here that there is something which is called the absorption or pumping so you put a photon to the atomic system electron goes from lower state to excited state and there's something which is called the absorption okay the second thing which is called the spontaneous emission so let's say electron is there in the excited state and it decay down to the lower state just by okay let's talk a little more quantum mechanical descriptions so let's say we have a box of photons here there are many many photons each with uh, like very prescribed mode so once you associate a photon okay so once you shine, uh, one photon is absorbed by this atom so photon in this mode will be replaced by one uh, sorry will be decreased by one and the energy of atom will go excited once energy of atom is like this and put here a box of photons so what happens really that there is a de excitation so so the elect energy of atom goes down and photon in this mode will be increased by one but come to this stimulated emission it is like kind of crazy stuff so it is like you put your electron uh, sorry you put your atom over here and shine your photon while atom is in excited state and once you shine a photon atom will also decrease to the to the ground state and actually you will add up two photons in the same mode okay so as modes are the solution of uh, wave equation photon wave equation so these photons will also go to same mode and that's why you see a something which is called a direction so in this case and in this case you see the difference of direction in this case in spontaneous emission photon might go to any direction while in case of a stimulated dire uh, stimulated emission the direction of emitted photon to emitted photon and direction of the exciting photon or pumping photon they are same direction and energy they both are same and uh, in quantum mechanical way i can say that all three photons they belong to really same mode okay well i can show you a very easy spectroscopic setup in my laboratory so it is like uh, okay so it is for the interrogation of uh, potassium atoms so red light is actually 767 nanometers easy oh, sorry it is a potassium cooling la light so you put your potassium atom over here and send actually some light to the atoms and they, they behave some uh, okay and then you can actually detect this uh, okay so you can detect this uh, intensities uh, of light okay what do actually we do we we throw the light for a for a frequency like for a range of frequency time to time so we change from omega 1 to omega 2 between time t1 to t2 and and if you shine the light over here and if you put a photo detector over here so each time when let's say omega 1 is absorbed so in the photo detector you will see a dip and also for those which are like less absorbed you will see a small dip and and like bigger dip this is called the saturation absorption spectroscopy and like one of the most common method interrogating atoms and asking like what is your energy structure and once you know the energy structure these things this height of these things actually they correspond to this kind of integral and uh, if you go more detail actually these heights are not only they are not only corresponding to this this integral but at very very fine structure level this actually correspond to the klebs gordon coefficients and so but that's there's a secondary stuff and outside the scope of the talk so what was the next topic uh, i have planned for today and can you tell me how much time i actually have okay so uh, uh, it's 15 minutes more 
15 to 20 okay, minutes. 15, yeah, you can 15, proceed. Uh-huh, okay, okay. It's like, I have told you like how to interrogate atoms with light. Let's, let me tell you how to manipulate atoms in time. Uh, sorry, with light. And this is like, this might also will give you some sort of theoretical description, but I might open my notebook and I will tell you like, okay. So just forget about the mathematics, but I will tell you something very easy. So, okay, let's first. Let's say you have an atom and it has a lot of energy levels. Let me write. Let's say you have an atom and it has a lot of energy levels, very irregular. So there is a way, okay. And if an atom has n level of energy, so n number of energy levels, you you can describe this atom in actually n-dimensional Hilbert space. But while, okay, and n is just the actual number of energy levels. But believe me, if you have a very nice laser over here, which is uh, well monochromatic or near to the monochromatic, you can, you can reduce the dimensionality of this Hilbert space interacting with this laser near to the two. So uh, I don't know if there is any specific notation, but like if you make a combo of this Hilbert space with the laser, there is a way you can describe this entire, uh, this entire, uh, okay, so not the describe, but you can reduce your talking into, okay, so you can reduce the dimensionality of Hilbert space of two dimension. And actually with these two dimensions, also, other energy levels are present, but with these two energy levels, you can well talk, okay? So, uh, that's very famous. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt. So, there is another question uh, in the yeah. chat box. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Nikita is asking, how hydrogen has only one proton. Yeah. Then, how do you represent so many orbital pictures in hydrogen wave equation slide? There was a slide yeah. of hydrogen wave equation. Hydrogen wave equation? I don't understand. So how do you represent so many orbital pictures? Uh, this one? This is a gold and silver. No? Uh, no, this is gold and silver. Yeah. I don't know if Nikita these is here. Then these are just... Find. Uh, uh -huh. uh, you can ask oh, anything. This. Yes, yes, yes. I guess this, I guess she's asking. Hydrogen wave function. This, see, uh, yeah, hydrogen wave function. They're just solution of Schrodinger equation, okay? You plug any quantum numbers, NLM quantum numbers, and it will give you a wave function, something like this. And that's actually a uh, way better way of plotting it is. Like something which is called density plot. But it is just a nice way of plotting. If I plot it like something like this, it will go. Okay. But because this plot isn't actually three dimensions, so they they have really represented it into the density plot, otherwise it will actually go in three dimensions once you do a contour plot. Uh, not the contour plot, but just histogram kind of plot. Okay. But... Uh, f just forget about this, just because hydrogen have uh, only like one electron, but these wave functions, you might plug any analog quantum numbers and you will get any kind of shape of wave functions. And it will give you like, once you excite this, this uh, one electron to this energy, what could be the possible reasons where you will get the electron, okay? This. Okay, but... Let's we, we have talked like how to ask atoms what was an energy structure. Let's talk like uh, in a little different way, something which is uh, more modern. So I told you that atoms might have a lot of energy levels, but if you have a well nice laser and and uh, so that you can uh, you can combine the laser and atom, and we call, uh, you will end up with a real two dimensional or three dimensional system okay for the moment let's talk you will end up with a 
two-dimensional picture where your laser can talk electron here and here, okay? And this is very important because, because if you, you take two, these two dimensions, let's say at state zero and state one, so there is something which I will show in, uh, in a theory so that you can control electron superposition. So let's say your electron might be here, Ah, let's say your electron might be here at this point, or let's say your electron might be here. So if electron is in this state, it is well in zero state, if electron is here and in well one state one, while you can also, with the laser, you can also manipulate the, what is the superposition. So if you want your electron that it has a probability of mod C1 square in state zero and probability of mod, oh, sorry, probability of mod C1 square in state one, probability of mod C0 square in state zero. So you can actually do it, it with your lasers. And how will you do it? I, I will show you right here. Without the mathematics, I just actually want to show you that once a light wave with the frequency omega interacts with the, your atomic system, so your electrons go from here to there and then come to here and then again it go from here to there. And so it actually go up and down and that's something which is called the Rabi oscillations, okay? So for each cycle it will go here and go there, it really emits one photon. And uh, if these oscillations are really high, so you will get a lot of photons, okay? So number of photons actually you will get, they are proportional to what is the Rabi oscillation here, which is also a function of those, that integral. But let me tell you a different story. So, okay, if, if there is a Rabi oscillation, believe me, it's like, uh, you have a probability of finding electron in excited state, but the electron is going here and there and here and there. So, so the probability of finding electron in this state, it is actually oscillating, okay? Let's say it is oscillating something like cos omega t or, or something uh, in a different way, but it, it actually oscillates in this way. So probability of getting electron in ground state, it actually oscillates cos square omega t by two, omega is some strength of perturbation or, or, uh, or uh, way in way better way in this way, okay? Probability of finding the electron in excited state, this also oscillate, and it goes in the following way. So this axis is actually omega t. Omega t also corresponds to the the time of uh, the time of uh, uh, time of the laser pulse, or I was the shortening of the laser pulse, but it corresponds. And let's say. You, you make your laser pulse short enough so that the laser pulse only go for this period and see what really happens. If your laser pulse will go for this period, your electron will actually be in excited state because at this position, the probability of finding electron in excited state is really one, okay? So this pulse has a very famous name, it is called pi pulse. And what if, if you make it even more shorter? Let's say make it after okay. time. Oh, by yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Swagata has raised hand, so please can you yes. unmute and ask if you yeah. have any questions? Uh, I have to unmute. Uh huh. Okay. okay, uh, okay. No, no. Yeah. Swagata has to unmute. Hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Please do ask. Uh, I have a question. Uh... In the previous slide, you have told that the Hilbert space mm -hmm. dimension de uh, can be decreased, but how no, no, is uh, uh, not dimension uh, can be decreased? I talk that you can well talk to a two-dimensional Hilbert space. Okay? okay, if you have a very fine laser, so that laser frequency is let's say this is omega. So with this laser and with this atomic system, you will be talk to to a two-dimensional Hilbert space which is kind of subspace of this uh, entire Hilbert space, but you will be able to talk, okay? And everything okay. I'm talking right now is a is happening in this Hilbert space, okay? This is a, this Hilbert space, small Hilbert space um, of two-level atom. Yeah. 
and uh, and with this also, in this configuration yeah please ask yeah please uh, ask and one more Just thing don't... Uh, yeah why why the electron is oscillating between the ground state and the excited state yeah yes Yes, that's what is called Ravi oscillation. Yes, I mean, uh, why this is oscillating actually? Uh, because, uh, <laughs> okay, so in semi-classical uh, picture, it's like you put a photon and photon is like something cos omega to something like this. And then it happens that the electron goes here and it come over there. It is uh, in other way. Let's say this this is that has a something lifetime ten to the power negative seven seconds. So uh, electron go here, and after ten to the power negative seven second, it actually decay by emitting one photon. Yeah. But uh, yeah. electron is here, and it will be pumped by this photon once again. Okay. It will go there, yeah. and after ten to the power negative seven seconds, it will decrease. Okay. Did you got it? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so I, it is just because of the finite prob lifetime of these states, but the okay, more basic thing is just given. okay. Yeah, uh, the more basic thing is Rabi oscillations. But uh, here, coming. Okay. So uh, I just told yeah. you that, that if you have a two-level atom, so that you can populate the excited state, you can populate the ground state, you can actually and just by uh, having a coherent monochromatic laser, and uh, just by uh, Manipulating what is the size of pulse in time, you can manipulate the population, and just the manipulation of population is actually give you the the wave function. So, actually, the wave function is like total psi is something c one one and plus c zero zero. That's the wave function of a qubit, and c one is nothing but this. Uh, like p e is nothing but like uh, mod c1 is squared and pz is nothing like uh, nothing but like mod c0 is squared okay so with this you can actually manipulate your uh, pulse time and you can uh, you can interplay between states and you can do you can put your electron in any state which is possible okay just by manipulating your pulse time. So this is something which is a very basic and very fundamental idea. How do you manipulate atoms with light? Manipulating atoms actually mean like manipulating their quantum states, okay? And uh, what was the last mod last thing I have? Okay, so, so something which is very, very important for the audience, I, really, I will take five minutes to explain. So coherent control. If you have a lot of atoms over here, let's say, let's say you have managed to put a lot of atoms in a trap, and uh, you want to manipulate each of the atom, what should be the actual uh, energy state of the atom. Like you, you need to set the wave function psi for each atom. Let's say P E E R plus, oh, sorry, but like it will be C1, 1 plus. C zero zero. If you want to set this wave function, and if you want to do it with light, so you can, you can, you can do it, and that's something which is called the coherent control. So with this coherent control, actually, you can do a lot of quantum information uh, processing. And and what is multiparticle and multipartite system? So if you have a lot of atoms in a in a cavity or at least anywhere in a trap, so if you have a lot of atoms, then the general name is multi-particle system. But if you can address each of atom individually, and with each of atom you can you can do a coherent control. Like if you are able to make your system so that each of atom you can address individually and make it within any of the wave function, like uh, so that you can. Uh, how can I say it? Like addressing individual atoms and making uh, making a resonant coherent control. If it is possible, then this system is actually called a multi-part multi-partite system. And the re for real quantum information processing, you actually need a multi-partite system where atoms are uh, atoms are like uh, placed in half cubic centimeter, 
and then you really need to address each of them individually and that's why it is really hard to achieve because uh, if you have a laser beam which has a diameter let's say zero at five millimeter and the, your atoms are here so it is really hard to address each of atoms individually so that's quite hard to get a multipartite system and that's what what is well essential for the quantum information processing so how is it actually done you can you can you can trap first atoms and you, then you put the atoms in optical tweezers where you can reduce the atom number to one and then then each atom is like then each atom can be manipulated by using laser pulses so that's one way of doing and okay so is there an, any other question i thought like i just i just told you everything what i planned I just didn't told you classical, semi-classical, and quantum interaction, just because I thought that it could be a little out of context. But if you want, and if I have time, I can tell you. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, ask about the questions and guidance and stuff. Okay, okay. I oh, guess sorry, sorry. Uh, anybody who wants to ask any question. Sorry, I have a uh, question. Yeah, sir. Uh, why the frequency of light changes frequently, and also, and but mm. uh, lambda is not uh, when it is no, 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 uh, in opposite, in opposite way, in opposite way. See, frequency oh. is constant, while the lambda not the constant uh, because there are way there are really methods which is called the some frequency generation and so second harmonic generation a lot. You, you put your laser through a medium and it will change the frequency of medium and it will generate another photon and so. But it is not very likely that it will happen in accident. While but we, uh, lambda, yeah. but yeah. as we know that uh, uh, both of these are uh, uh, varying inversely, uh, how it uh -huh. becomes uh, uh, more likely to change? Okay. Uh, the, so actually, uh, there are certain mediums like a glass and uh, your light velocity is manipulated, okay? So, uh, velocity is manipulated where I've written it, okay? Here, uh, once your velocity is manipulated, lambda sh should manipulate to make the energy of light constant, right? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, while in this turn, you will see that this is very co constant stuff. So, <laughs> what is only possible that this should not change? But there are ways where, where you can change the frequency of light. And one is something very, very common is called FHG, second harmonic generation. So you put a photon of energy omega. And uh, with some medium, you will get two photons of energy omega 1 and omega 2. And they also that omega, omega is 0 or omega is equals to omega 1 plus omega 2. And also if th this has a k vector in this direction, so this both have like k1 and k2 so that the resultant direction is in this direction okay so that's how yes sir. but uh, you you got it right there are ways how can you change the frequency but there are expensive ways okay so, so i have another question sir please do ask uh, sir why are we writing the total hamiltonian as a sum of hamiltonian but the total uh -huh. wave function as a product of wave functions. Uh -huh. uh, this, uh, again, very easy stuff. So it's kind of like, okay, let's say your wave function is, okay, or any operator, okay? Not even the, not even the Hamiltonian operator, but let's say any operator. Del over del X plus del over del Y plus del over del Z plus del over del T, okay? Easiest operator I'm talking about, okay? Okay, and what could be the you know, eigen, eigen function of this operator? It, if you choose only something which is a function of x, so if you, let's say if you apply here psi x, so what will actually happen that these operators will vanish psi x. Once you apply a psi y here, these other operators will vanish psi y and so, 
but if you apply psi x psi y and the psi z and the psi t or something but so what really happens that while uh, one operator will be operated on uh, let's say del x is operated on psi x others being constant del y is operated on psi y others being constant that's the survey it is called the separation of variables okay oh, you got it yes, other sir. questions please Tom, currently you are working on these uh, cold act yeah okay I call the atoms so they're like uh, atoms so that you can uh, they are being cooled to their absolute zero so that uh, like there are really less external perturbations and you can really verify the fundamental physics laws even symmetry violations and all this stuff very clearly and also you can put you can try to make an optical lattice with these atoms and and then you can do a many body physics so if you have a many body hamilton let's say the easiest something which is called the tight bending hamiltonian or hubbard hamiltonian so you can easily make a lattice which is uh, compatible to this kind of hamiltonian and you can deduce the thermodynamics and then you can really compare what what your theoretical model says and what you what you are getting experimentally and uh, making sure that uh, these atoms are cooled down to zero or uh, near to zero there are very less effects from the external perturbation okay okay so do you use any effective hamiltonian for this uh, for, for the cold atoms yes. okay so okay it is like a, like if they are near to the bose einstein condensate regime there is something which is called the non linear schrodinger equation or gross pitkovsky equation so it is a kind of schrodinger equation but different kind of schrodinger equation so you can use this schrodinger equation to actually know what is the density plot and things on your quantum gases while if you have a re real hamiltonian something the easiest is the hubbard so if you have a hamiltonian and you can try to model your hamiltonian within the optical lattice so it is like um, if you have a gas here and uh, you shine two lasers something like this and they make an interference and uh, with the interference the, you will get something which is called an optical lattice so <laughs> it could be actually like an lattice and with this strength of these uh, lattice sites you can engineer by something which is called the feedback resonances and uh, like you can simulate re uh, your real quantum stuff what what is necessary for this hamiltonian and then you can deduce the thermodynamics and decay and this stuff all okay 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 oh, sir, so I have one any yeah. other questions yeah they have uh yes please sir, as we have mentioned uh, in a uh, stimulated emission that uh, electrons or particles come uh -huh. back from excited state to ground state when we incident uh, some yeah. particular photon uh -huh. so is any yeah. uh, possibility that uh, that electron which are present in uh, excited state that also moves to higher state in a state in a state of coming yes back but uh, yes but it will be just the pumping it will be ju just an excitation okay but uh, but believe me that it it yeah it will be uh, it might move but it really depends like uh, then the process will be just a, a like excitation or it will like uh, yeah this process will be an excitation instead of a stimulated emission okay and in a stimulated emission one thing is very very important that you will shine the photon which has an energy same to where you want to decay down okay so uh, the energy of photon ah okay the energy of photon should be of of that it should be that then only it is possible to stimulate like emit a photon and uh, that's the principle what is used in lasers but like yeah that is the fundamental 
principle behind the lasers. And uh, and uh, I just introduced this stuff that you can uh, you can decrease your dimensionality of the subspace so that you can talk. And this is actually something which is very important for all TWI models and quantum information processing. This is called a TLS, two-level system, or TLA, two-level atom. And uh, in any qubit or in any system, they are actually the systems where you can do information processing and stuff. You you don't really use the all atoms in your... Uh, uh, sorry, all, all energy states of your atom, but you actually talk to any two energy states and, and so with the help of a res quite resonant laser. Any other questions, please? Uh, okay, Om. So there is a career-oriented question. Yeah, the career. Yeah, please do. Uh, yeah, th that's what I was talking about. Now you can ask yeah. your career guys and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Lipsha is asking, what are the possibilities of the PhD in this subject? Uh -huh. So India has just launched a national quantum mission. And, uh, like, uh, you know, National Quantum Mission is all about doing the quantum information processing, development of atomic clocks, and the quantum key distribution, and so So not the quantum key distribution is quite the same, but the uh, development of atomic clocks, they really, really require cooling atoms down. And the cooling atoms down isn't an easy thing. That really, believe me, there is a very complicated processor behind cooling atom downs to near to absolute zero. And uh, that's why even it was predicted in, in a way before, it, the realization of both Einstein condensate were, uh, will, was only possible just before 30 years or even less. And those people who have did it, might you are familiar, if anybody know, know the name you might Tell me, this this person was Chu and the Kohen Tanozi. Kohen Tanozi written a very nice quantum mechanics book. Yes, yeah, so Kohen Tanozi got a Nobel Prize for the laser cooling. So these people have invented something which is called the Sisyphus cooling. And so any industrial uh, applications of this, who is, which is yes. going on? Yeah. Yeah, so there is a computers in the in one university. They are trying to send cold atoms. In, sorry, industrial application of cold atoms. What I told spectroscopy. Spectroscopy has a lot of industrial application. But uh, if uh, is there any person who is doing industrial spectroscopy? No. Okay, nobody is here. Uh, but uh, in like in industrial spectroscopy, you have a lot of things like uh, uh, you have pharmaceuticals and you, you yeah, yes. Uh, actually, uh, I'm really not qualified to tell you the, what is the industrial scope of these things. But uh, industry ha has a lot of spectroscopy it's in demand. But uh, in fundamental physics, they're really, really a lot of importance of this, this kind of uh, information processing and so. But uh, one thing I can I can make sure that you won't be jobless if you do so. Or <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, so there is okay. another question by Balaji. So mm -hmm. he is asking, what are the fields or researchers mm -hmm. going? Related to waste degradation by utilizing physical concepts. Which one has waste most? degradation? Waste degradation. I don't think uh, this is again again I again I'm not qualified to answer this question. That uh, what uh, mm -hmm. believe me that uh, I am just a PhD student and uh, I might have a lot of things what I don't know compared to. What what things I really know. So, yes, 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 definitely. Yes, because uh, this has not a quite relevance to this topic of what you are saying. Anyways, Om, so you were uh, thinking to say about career guidance on how to yeah, so, PhD so, from abroad. Uh huh. Okay. So, first thing, PhD from abroad. Justin, 
I want to tell you something very, very important in this case. So, PhD from a abroad requires a lot of sacrifice, and there is there is a lot of chances, a really lot of chances, that at your home, the time when you you were supposed to be there, okay, there are times in your life then that you were supposed to be at your home. And there is a finite probability that at time you won't be at home. Like uh, there might happen say, something your loved ones undergo a casualty and or somebody might pass away and there is a well probability that you won't be at home. So if you are ready to undergo this kind of sacrifice, then yes, PhD from abroad is re- right for you. Unless you don't have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money, so you can uh, book a flight anytime. But yes, if you, if you don't have a lot of money, then this really happens. And if you try to go through this sacrifice, I will tell you some certain things. So if you want to know your PhD, first prepare your master's thesis very nicely. That's really important stuff because most of the PhD interviews really do ask about this master thesis. While in Europe, university to university, the entrance procedure for PhD really vary. But one thing is very common that they will ask you about your master thesis. While in USA, there is an exam which is called a ZRE. So ZRE is mandatory for US. Also, some English-speaking countries, ah, English-speaking countries, they really require uh, a test for English is called a GRE English or IELTS. So, the, but that's for the English speaking countries. And uh, okay, so the way you approach for a PhD is like uh, you might uh, find what is your most interesting field, and then you write an email to your to your favorite person in this field. Write an email to this field, uh, this person, and. There is a very low probability that he will respond to your email. Write email time to time and then wait for response. So in 5% cases, you really get a response. And in, from this 5%, there are 10% cases that he might offer you a position. But this position is subjected to the conditional acceptance in the university. And uh, dep- it depends really on the your mutual consent and uh, also how much he likes uh, within some period of time he might ask you to solve some questions and so and uh, for example this Warsaw University in Poland it has uh, it takes a really written examination uh, uh, would you mind sh- showing me how this written examination look like because I, I I can speak more about my university right now Yes, yes, I think you can show it. We'll have a healthy yeah. discussion on it. Uh, yeah, so it's like... What's the university? So they have a okay, written let's... examination for a... Yeah, yeah. yeah, they have a written examination. Okay, so you go to doctoral schools of University of Warsaw. And uh, then you go to uh, education section, doctoral education. And uh, for example, we are doing physics, so you should go to doctoral school of exact and natural sciences. Okay. So right now, l- let me let me put this piece in English. Okay. So you will get the website to the doctoral school. Now go to enrollment. Okay. Enrollment, now the re- new rec- recruitment for this year is actually active, but the deadline is passed. But I will show you something, okay? Uh, no, okay. What really happened? Yeah. Uh, okay, so you might be interested in any subject. So I'm interested in physical sciences. So physical sciences is here, okay? So as I was just telling you that the deadline is passed. It was from 8th to 19th of May. 8th May to 19th of June of the same year. But there was a schedule of interviews and so. The recruitment fee is 2030. So it's kind of, uh, it is kind of 4,000 rupees. 
but uh, some universities don't really have this uh, recruitment fee, but some some universities do have, okay? But he, he, you say previous year question papers, so uh, you, you will see some, they have a written examination, for example, uh, I qualified this one. So with this qualification, doctoral school physical sciences exam, here they will give you a constant, they will give you how much accuracy you should provide in your questions. And they have two sections, okay? Problem number one to five, you write the four of these questions and six to nine, you write the two of their solutions, but problems are, you will see the problems right now, okay? So first problem is the electrons and demand. And it is like you have a crystal lattice of demon, nearest number of atoms have this distance and electron is accelerated by this voltage. Okay, and uh, there is some de Broglie equivalent of electron. And then you like calculate what is the potential energy to exit or, or something like this for the electron, okay? The second question was the laser and evaporation. So uh, you have a surgical laser and that's emit a light of this wavelength and then you, you need to do, uh, you have a tissue and then there's specific heat for tissue. And then at the end you need to calculate the number of photons absorbed by the tissue. The third question, you have like harmonic oscillator and you, you need to know what is the, you need to calculate what is the probability of getting electron outside the classical, outside the classically forbidden reason of the harmonic oscillator. So probability of finding the, the electron where electron is actually tunneled through the potential variables. So this was the, that question. Here was the very easy question. It was like proton is position. Okay, so it was a two particle process, and you need to calculate the some like energy before and after the collision. If you know what is called the momentum conservation, it is just a high school problem, but it's like uh, they have written in a very fancy way. Okay, this question was from the radioactivity. So half-life of a certain isotope was this one, and this is a, that's a radioactivity pre-university uh, problem, but yeah. Okay, the, now do you have a, a hard questions. One was the dumping coal question, so it is like you have a bullet cart with, this, <laughs> with coal of mass M, and then you write cart is moving, but there is a leakage of... Uh, leakage of coal and then you need to really then you really need to use a rocket equation or variable mass dynamics to solve this so you need to speed up cart like when the cart become empty and so flowing out liquid it is a Bernoulli equation question it is not very hard with like a pipe and uh, below the pipe there is uh, there is a hole in the center and uh, it goes it has this question also yeah, yeah, it has it. Yeah. So and then you have like quantum cylinders. So there is a cylinder, and it has like uh, you put electron in a single layer of graphene is rolled. So it's kind of cylinder. You put the electron in the cylinder. They have really given you what is the wave equation, and you need to do the small quantum mechanics. Then you have heat flow, and Okay, so that's, that's the question from the thermodynamics. And uh, this kind of questions they usually ask. Okay, it was the 21 and 22 I have given different exam. It was, again, the same things, but like uh, tunneling through the center of earth, but it's not a very classical problem you have seen in high school. Particle in, in field, electric and magnetic field, it is just a cyclotron problem. Water flowing, it was actually a Bernoulli equation problem. Isothermal equation, it was um, it was actually a, uh, thermodynamics, the fraction from the crystal, again thermodynamics, and the soap bubble is from surface tension stuff, rubber band, and some uh, particle physics problem, hydrogen spectrum, and the concentration of solution on the on the basis of absorbance measurement and heating the pool and all. 
this one was really a hard question like determining the concentra- concentration and hitting the pool while well, uh, concentration of solution you can easily do it there is something which is called lambert beer law and it's very straightforward and actually i was just uh, just realized that they have they have made a mistake in printing because they should be less than 320 but they have just written greater than 320 i just realized okay but uh, this is how how you how you get in this university right and thereafter you you need to ask something like a presentation so i just i just want to sh- okay so it, it goes in following way okay any other question okay so there is a question in a chat box so aha uh-huh. do Do you need to have research publications before no. admission no. into a PhD? No, no, no. Uh, if, if they are, they, then it is good. If they are not, then it is not important. Like it's a general question. So, can I get a PhD yeah. abroad if I do not have a research publication? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can get for sure. You can get. Only one percent of students in any country do they do really have a. research publication before phd or even less than 1% yes so other questions please okay so pavan has a question so he is a student of msc mm-hmm. uh, like he has passed out msc and has a specialization in material science and uh-huh. he wants to do further work out of india so please suggest mm-hmm. regarding the admission into material science admission or like all the physics branches or all the science stuff has the same way you approach yeah. your supervisor or write supervisor or write your favorite person in very nice way there do not use that machine which generating the Uh, the emails that actually the yeah. new thing the chat gpt is yes, doing it quite well but like they can they might understand it but yeah like yeah, probably you know. yeah you can but actually okay. right now i am doing right now right now complete my ms work is not वैसे मतलब मेरा पेपर अभी पब्लिश नहीं हुआ बट वर्क इज ठीक है तो दैट्स नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट पेपर इज आई आई टोल्ड यू पेपर इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट एक्चुअली सर मैंने वैसे काम किया है मटेरियल साइंस पे तो कैन कैन आई गेट एडमिशन इन अदर अदर कंट्री आई फॉर श्योर यू कैन गेट बट लाइक यू नीड टू अप्रोच योर सुपरवाइजर पेपर इज नॉट द बेसिक लाइक यू कैन से ओके आई हैव एन आर्टिकल एंड सो दैट आई आई मस्ट गेट द एडमिशन आर्टिकल इज जस्ट लाइक यू आर वर्किंग विद अ ग्रुप ओके आर्टिकल जस्ट इंटीग्रेशन दैट यू यू विल बी इन्वॉल्वड इन अ वर्किंग ग्रुप बट इट ओनली लाइक believe me that master thesis and phd thesis are completely out of like they have very different experiences and so yes, so sir, at I, least i am from nit jalan so so it is uh, very straight forward that uh, you might approach to any people who, whom you like in your field in or outside in the might be outside in the if you want and just write this person that why are you interested in what you can do for his group do not write like okay i did material science and and like material science is why it is so important and so like do not write an essay on material science but write like what what you have did why it is important and what you can do for his group uh, you can attach your cv to the email and send him and there is a not fun not very good but there is a probability that he he might he might respond to your email okay because uh, because uh, that's something fate of the phd students or uh, those students who want to get a phd that not all supervisors really respond yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, go through the institute sites and whatever interest yeah. you you can uh, mail to the individual professor who are working in the field 
what you want to do and yeah i guess yes B- because without this psd is not possible yeah okay just just i can show you that uh, with the psd and the doctoral school in warsaw you, you need really to get a, a statement from your potential supervisor that he will accept you uh it should be like and before that you also need to like a description of initial research proposal this thing like uh, you need need to write even a research proposal initial research proposal and without the help of your supervisor you can't do it mm. uh, here also in what sense they ask something for ielts from this year but it's not very important like if your supervisor is agreed just don't uh, don't give it okay okay so there is another yeah. question mm-hmm. do we yeah. need recommendation from our professors when we mail the professors yeah uh, no not in the email but in the application uh, in the application yes they might ask yeah i have simple question to you sir uh, mm-hmm. yeah. if the students who wish to pursue his phd in abroad and mm-hmm. uh, if he has very good paper so what mm-hmm. is the chances of getting a phd in the abroad ah so w- once again the paper is only a, okay again come to me i i just want to show you something at least from my university i know what can i do what can i show so i can show you okay see uh, in this page they have written like what is the criteria of assessment you, you write something which is called initial research proposal and the unit you will get five marks okay then you will get something which is a scientific activity of the candidate and the, the, this 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 has 15 mark and it includes scientific publication confirmation okay so it has six points and six points really conclude to 15 marks and then you have 14 marks for the qualification examination 40 marks for the interview so at least in my university or most of the universities have the same assessment criteria so you will get some points for the scientific publication so it is not like just getting a scientific publication will really make you sure that you will get a phd publication it is good having a scientific publication but it is not like uh, very trivial for uh, for master students okay did you got it what i said uh, at least in my university you will get 15 points and uh, n- not just because of one paper that there are six ways you can get this 15 points and uh, one point which is most important it might it might it might count for four or five points if you have a scientific publication so yes scientific publication will increase your probability of getting an admission but not by 100% but by let's say 3% or 5% but what is important do good in qualification examination interview and even more important talk your supervisor and nicely that only he will be able to Okay. If, if, okay. if the student is inter- interested in your university mm-hmm. uh, so uh, if, uh, the examination that he is going to give is uh-huh. is it online mode availability is there availability for the online mode or whether uh, the person has to be given in a physical mode uh, so actually uh, both probabilities so you can you can come to warsaw or much better like you can do in it in online mode so online mode for outside students is much better but you need to uh, to show up your you all the time in front of your computer and then it's like okay <laughs> there are ways how can you uh, basically can you... coming to the europe you know it going mm-hmm. to sp- spend a lot of money so it's a no, very no, you, mo- can, you can you can you can do it on on google meet or zoom actually ah, that is what i mean if it is possible yeah. by the online mode then uh, maximum of the student who wish to study there they got the maximum yeah. opportunities at least yeah yes with like 
Universal University is prestigious and they ask those questions like which chat GPT can't answer. I have just shown you questions. They're not very trivial questions so that like, you put on internet and you'll immediately get a, uh, an answer, no? So for sure you can do it and... Yeah, yeah, I got it. You, you got it, right? Mm-hmm. This 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 year there are questions also from the many body physics actually in the in the entrance exam. But like everything is not very hard because this is just three three hour question paper, so what can you do in three hours? Mm-hmm. But uh, but the harder even harder thing is going through an interview. Oh, and you. Uh, you just make sure that you are very calm in interview and don't over talk in interview because if you over talk then some some professors really go crazy and i was uh, uh, th- there is a well probability that you do not answer many questions and just make sure that don't you don't lose your calm so uh, not answering a question this will just like you're not having knowledge in this field. So, uh, actually, if you answer half questions in your interview, there is a good chance that you will get into Warsaw University. Because uh, I remember they asked me very first question, what is fluctuation dissipation theorem? I said, I forgot. And they said, okay. This is nice. Uh, This is nice kind of uh, answers or things it might help students because usually it is like you have to show like you have to tell whatever you know but it's okay if you do not know you just yeah, have so very much honest like, uh, yeah, so each time if you don't know say, say I don't know don't say like okay I don't know fluctuation dissipation theorem but try to tell them Nyquist criteria and so this is fluctuation dissipation theorem or something like don't don't tell them any wrong things, right? So this... yes, yes. This is this is a very nice, yeah. So uh, it goes in following with a lot of questions. I remember a lot of questions. I said, I really, I don't know, I don't know. But at least you need to prepare. Yes, yes, yes. So I hope uh, any other questions. Any other questions, even from the lectures? If there we we can see, otherwise we can. Okay, so we can always take up the questions later also because uh, we have the previous question and answers discussion from the 7th AIP talk. So as Uh AIP goal is, as we all know, is to reach each and every student of nation Uh to benefit themselves in the subject of physics and various fields of physics. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, thank you, Om, for such an mm-hmm. informative and for your valuable advices to students. I mm-hmm. guess they have definitely been benefited from your today's talk. And yes, if they have any other questions, so we have a question and answer uh, question uh, and okay. discussion. Portal. Definitely ask questions in there also. Mm-hmm. So I want to request everybody to can mm-hmm. please switch on their camera so that we can take a screenshot or shall we sh- shift okay. it time or shall we start with the question answer discussion? So Captain, what do you say? We can take the yeah. screenshot. We can take the, uh, like, uh, the screenshots. First, let's go for the uh, picture session, photo session, then we can. Uh, yes. So I request everyone to switch on their camera so that we can take a picture. Making sure that everybody is present physically. Complete stop sharing so that. Ah, so I need to stop sharing. Uh, how can I do? Yeah. Is it also include me too? Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah, you are speaker. Yes, 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 definitely. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm-hmm. okay, let me make sure that I look nicer in this. 
Um, just a minute. Kind of, uh, my tablet has a portrait camera, and if I if I rotate hey. the tablet, you will see me laying. So you need to see me like this. Well, your half face is visible. What? Yeah, your half, your face is half. Your face half is visible. My face is half. Okay, let me rotate the camera. Uh, I don't know. It's okay, kind fine, of. Fine. No, no, it's, it's fine, okay. fine. No issues. It's fine. Okay. I I, I perceive. So. I have taken enough screenshots. Uh, how many people so I can see? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. We shall didn't uh, just. He didn't turn his camera on. No, no, actually I was trying, but it's uh, somehow it's not possible. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Michelle, there was a question. Can I ask you the, what is the industrial application of spectroscopies? And we really didn't answer it. Spectroscopy is everywhere. So so you can do most of the things like- Industrial, uh, I, industrial. Yeah, yeah, I heard like some waste management. I, I did not listen properly, but maybe it was some waste uh, something. So in, in that field, in that field, there are there is a spectroscopy already being used. So, for example, LIPS and Raman and uh, laser induced fluorescence, and these are spectroscopic methods which are being used. And uh, mostly, uh, so many industries are already making like portable setups and like using a spectroscopy. So, some some field capable setup, portable setup are like uh, so many things. So. So spectroscopy is too much involved in this kind of things, and most industries are involved. So okay. there is a good scope for, for such things. So I just told them that you want to be jobless. <laughs> I'm not expert, but <laughs> those who don't know that the visual is the no, industry. The, the, Basically, no. you know, uh, when we talk about the uh, wastewater treatment, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of contaminants uh, available in the water. Or added, which are coming out from the industries or maybe uh, human activities. So, in order to check whether those uh, chemical compositions are present or not, we use a simple technique, what we call as the spectroscopy, as one of the member as state. Uh, it is a very non-destructive uh, method that we, uh, we uh, uh, which we always use. As an example, uh, if there is uh, some carcinogenic dyes present inside the water. So if you want to remove or how much percent it has been removed in order to quantify it, we need to uh, you uh, we use spectroscopy as one of the medium to understand it. So in that way, there are a lot of applications. Yeah, I agree. I, I also did my PhD in the laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. So which is the uh, elemental analysis method and it, it gives qualitative, quantitative both things. So you can quantify at any point. So any sample, solid, liquid, gas, whatever. So it's uh, like also elemental analysis and we can uh, we can give the concentration, how much is remaining or how much was there already. So something like that. Yeah. So yeah, spectroscopy is there in industry. <laughs> Even uh, even really even currently, I'm working with the, of course, spectroscopy. But I'm developing my own, not own, but uh, university part. It's part of university research. So developing field capable research uh, device, which can go to the fields and measure the elements in the available in the soil. So, for example, phosphorus, carbon, nitrogen, and these things. So we need to go to the agriculture land and uh, measure there directly. So we need some device which is. Uh, uh, which can be transported to not from the lab but uh, uh, to the field directly there. So not sending samples to the lab but uh, bringing device to the fields. Okay. Yeah, so the Vishal has also developed. He is a postdoctoral researcher in Tampere University in Finland, and uh, he, has, he has really published a lot of papers, which is not possible. During PhD, but he really published somehow. Uh, okay, um, so there is another question. So, what are mm -hmm. the financial scholarships to go to abroad? 
Uh, scholarships really depends on university. Or higher but, studies. Yeah, uh, depends on university and projects. So, for example, I am getting a project scholarship, but there is also a university scholarship. So it, it goes in the following way. So you usually get a university scholarship, and you, your supervisor might top up with a, with some money. So it goes in the following way that you get something like, in Europe, let's say you get 900 euro from the university, and then your supervisor will give him something around 300 euros each month. But if you, he will be happy, he will increase the amount. Or if you publish some paper, you will get some money from the university. And, uh, in a, but for sure you will get something, uh, some money to, to make sure that your life is okay in the, in the country. But not, not in all countries. Like if you go to Hungary, then the scholarship is very less. Like in Indian in rupees, it's called 10,000 rupees. So I recommend going there with your money. But all other countries, like at least in Europe, most of the countries have a scholarship. Warsaw University has yeah. something like um, around uh, 11,000, uh, 1,100 euro. But in the university where we shall has, they have a lot of scholarship. Yeah, uh, Mike, we shall, Mike, Mike, and Kroos. I realized that my camera was somehow on other than the meet, so it was parallel to camera. That's why it was not showing up here. <laughs> now I find out the problem. <laughs> it's okay, so. Uh, optics people solve optics problems. <laughs> so uh, other things, if, if there are any other questions. I uh, wish I might tell you like better uh, what uh, they were asking, like PhD scholarships. So PhD scholarship, very university to university. Really. It, it is uh, more than enough than the requirement of the students for from India at least. And it's more than enough your personal expenses and even you can save something at least. And yeah, it's in some countries it's not so nice, but mostly in Europe uh, you have good good salary and good good scholarships. It's, it's more than enough. Yes, but okay. <laughs> ask your supervisor with him, uh, how much he will be able to top up because most most people they really have a lot of money for uh, for laboratory but less money for people. So even they can't top up themselves. So how will they talk of uh, students? But if your laboratory has the money for people and money for students, then it is good. In contrast, there are also laboratories who, have, who do not have money for, uh, for equipments, but they have money for people. For example, if you want to buy something, which is in Indian rupees, let's say it is 200 crore. So uh, there are a lot of laboratories who can buy it. But they really do not have uh, any option to make a <laughs> take a student. I, I will just tell you that there is a laboratory uh, by Sorov in Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in India, and they have a lot of money, like around four hundred crore rupees of money, for buying instrument, and they have one, they have money for taking only one PhD student, so they can't take two PhD students. <laughs> So it's kind of crazy because it is a government uh, bureaucracy. So sometimes government don't allow to use in separate say, several things. So they will give for the things which you want to do. So if it is for research, you cannot use for the hiring PhD student or something. Yeah. So it is for research, then research. So that that's the thing. Every in each every country it's like that. So it's there is nothing special. Yes. And just for information, they had launched this national quantum mission, so uh, they will be developing the atomic clocks and the cold atom setup in India, and also extremely precise spectroscopies and so. Because I, I just I just want to tell you that common spectroscopies like uh, people are usually doing for monitoring, they they have something like a half or a quarter of a nanometer. Uh, resolution. Once you do a high precise spectroscopy, you will get a uh, resolution of like 10 to the power 10th of a nanometer. So you can ex see extremely precisely what is uh, what is going on in your, uh, in your system and so. So India is going to develop and they, they have a lot, a lot of stuff. 
and uh, for libs people it is uh, moment of very proud because yesterday in the ascent this uh, lunar probe to the moon and they have a libs set up yeah so okay, and, uh, okay. <laughs> Yes, okay. yes. Please was, continue. No, I was just like there was a student. I'm sure who made this lab set up in, in for the uh, for the lunar probe, and his student was here. I don't see see him right now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as I was thinking, so there was a question answer discussion round. So as Okay. Members are very less, so we shall postpone it to our next Is Sunday talk. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to ask about there is an some online symposium for. I guess there are only our council members here present here, so so we want to conduct a only council members symposium. are here. Okay. So, so we, first we, then we can do Okay. On. Okay, okay. So thank you. Thank you once again, Om, for such a great mm -hmm. talk. And uh, yes, we will definitely continue our next AIP talk and we'll give more information on the next talk of ours. So mm -hmm. thank you everyone for, for okay great interactive ses session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks. And uh, see you next Sunday. And about this, uh, this symposium, I really don't know because uh, Sanjay was asking like, what could be the real topics for the symposium? I really have no idea organizing a symposium. So how can I say what could we talk? Uh, what could be the topics that could be included? Because okay, no problem. Uh, we we will discuss now in after this meeting. Uh, okay. okay, so see you all. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Okay, see you all soon. Now I think. Uh, yeah, uh, Doctor Captain, you can stop the recording. Now we are only three members. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> Captain, you can uh, uh, re stop the recording, please. Okay, sir. So...